Who wouldn't want a human particle accelerator cannon? And yes, this works in update 8. Uh, yeah, kinda. Hello everyone, my name is Sheffrey, and welcome back for episode 9 of the Satisfactory series here on YouTube. It's time for some real shenanigans today, and we play with hyper tubes and build a little encased industrial beams line. Thank you for all the support and help with the series so far as we finally finish phase 2. Let's jump right into it. Episode 9, starting off in our favorite area. Alright, what are we doing today? We're going to clean up our hot bars because I realize these are just an absolute mess and I'm ashamed of myself. Uh, we're also going to set up a small encased beam, industrial beams at seven and a half per minute. Um, we're just going to break that off from our original steel plant. And we're going to mess around with some hyper tubes, build a human accelerator. Um, if you didn't, if you, I'm sure you guys are aware, um, update eight largely changed how the human accelerators work, but I have found a design that does work. It's super easy to build, so we're going to throw that together today. Also mess around with a little bit of blueprint testing as we unlocked the blueprint designer last time. We'll set up a little area for that. And then we should be able to move on to completing phase two of the space elevator. And ma making a major move into oil and all sorts of other stuff. Tier, is it five? It comes with phase two. Tier five and six. So, um... Let's, uh, let's get started today. We'll, let's start with the clean up the hot bars. Um, if you guys didn't know, you actually get more than one hot bar. If you hold down left alt, I believe, and use your scroll wheel, you have 10 hot bars you can scroll through. So there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So what I want to kind of set them up to do is be a little bit more efficient for my building. Um, and I think maybe like number one would be our most used, which would probably be our logistics. So I think what I'll do is I'll go one, two, three for the belts, four, five, six for the lifts. Um, I don't know. I don't really need those on a hot bar because we don't use them very often. Um, these could probably go on a hot bar though. Although, oh, throw that as seven. Well, holes I'll use a lot of, so I'll throw that on there as well. We'll have to do some readjusting later on, obviously, once we unlock like mark the higher mark belts and lifts and everything. I guess the lifts probably are not nearly as important to have on your hot bar, but um, okay. So then we'll go second hot bar. I've already kind of set up a little bit. It's all our all our pipeline stuff, um, but now we have floor holes, stackable pipe. Oops, what did I just take away? Uh, there we go. Yep, that's all our pipeline stuff. Pipes, junctions, pumps, and all the supports. Oh, I forgot under... Uh, let's go to our first hot bar again. And we're going to add splitters on here. So instead of the um, stackable pole... Actually, here's what I'll do. I'll do uh, I'll do conveyor pole or conveyor hole. I mean, Jesus. Um, and then we'll do merger splitter, smart splitter. And then on the third one, I'm gonna do constructor, assembler, smelter. Actually, here. Smelter, Foundry, Constructor, Assembler. Oops, I'm messing these all up because the autosave is messing me up. Smelter, Foundry. Oops. Oh, it's taking them away when I click on them. That one. Minor Mark 2 and 1. I could put this on the... I could put the water extractor on the pipeline one as well. That's pretty much an always. And then I'll do number four will be all my power. Our line, pole, pole, tower, platform, storage. Should be all right for now. Got all my basics. 
So there we go. Let's clean up hot bars a little bit. It's a little quick one we can knock out of the park. Now let's go throw together a little encased industrial beam setup and I'll, I'll tell you guys what we need here. We are going to need, I wrote it all down for you. We're going to need another, another minor mark two, uh, for the, for adding in concrete because we're going to need concrete, iron and coal. Um, then we're going to need three foundries. One of them is going to be down to 50%. We need five constructors. Um, three of them are going to be for concrete, and one of those concrete is going to be down to 50% as well. You'll need one assembler for the actual encased industrial beams, and then a storage bin, and then some belt upgrades, all that, all that fun stuff. Super easy. Um, but the very, 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 very first thing we're going to do before we head on over and do that, we are going to go on over to our little production facility over here. Um, I'm going to have to add in some power because I kind of forgot I didn't do that last time. Um, so let's go ahead and grab some power line. I don't have any cables, um, so I'm actually going to have to run around and grab things we're going to need really quick. Um, so what we're going to want to do and grab is we're going to want to grab all the things to feed these. So we're going to need things like pipes, uh, wire. Um, here we'll go. Pipes, pipes and wire. Rotors and, and uh, reinforced iron plates, modular frames, and steel beams. This one is cables and... Oh, stators. Okay, so the stators are actually going to come once um, this facility is actually fired up because this one is going to be the stators, so we need those first. But, um, actually, since I saw there was some cable over here, we'll just run and grab that really quick so we can kick this into, kick this into production for now. Don't mind if I just steal a little bit of your cable here. And hop on over here. We're going to connect this in here. Um, I am noticing too um, that the the further we get into the game, the longer I need wire as well. It just so happens I have everything right here. Um, the longer the recordings are getting. So I was kind of curious how you guys feel about um, the series going forward and what you what your thoughts are. Um, should it be um, or would you guys like more episodes with less things cut out or would you like less episodes with more things cut out just so we kind of like advance through the series faster? Um, like the upload schedule would remain the same, but it would basically just be like, I would, t I would do major cuts in videos where I'd be like, okay, now I've built this part. But uh, if you guys want to just kind of like take it real slow and follow along, I'm more than happy to do that. So we're just going to connect all these up to the power. We're not going to worry about this one in the end just yet because it is not ready. Connect those together. Oh, I connect those to the wrong ones. Try not to clip things through buildings when I can. So that one actually goes to there. This one goes here. This one goes here. There we go. So this should now be making me some stators. And uh, that'll allow me to fill up the machines on the end. So um, let's run around and grab some of those things. Um, let me add in to our to-do list of what we're actually going to need, what I was just saying. So we need our three foundries. Here are five constructors, our one assembler, our miner mark two, and then a storage bin. So, fun fact, I actually have to grab a bunch of things for, oh, that autosave though. Um, a bunch of things that are gonna fill up these machines are actually gonna be things we're gonna need. So, um, let's run around and uh, grab a few things and I'll meet, meet you guys back here. Oh, I almost forgot, we need to do our MAM research from last time. Uh, so let's go ahead and click on the MAM real, real quick and see what we got. We've got rigor motors, fine concrete, and iron alloy ingots. Um, I don't really want to have to do copper and iron together. I mean, it does come out at a decent rate, but honestly, I think the better um, ones to get for making alternate ingots are the pure recipes where you just mix this plus like iron ore plus water gives you more. So I'm going to keep my eye out for those. Um, I mean, fine concrete's not bad. I could maybe go with rigor motors. I don't know if that's a good one. We'll, we'll, we'll pick that one anyway. Um, and then we'll just go ahead and I actually put my hard drives in here. 
So let me just grab them out of here really quick. And we will throw another one into our research for now. I think I'm only going to do two um, until we unlock. Once we go to phase two, I think that's when I'll start putting them in more. Um, so that we can actually get uh, the a lot better alternate recipes. We'll just throw those back in there for now. And then we'll go grab our materials. All right. Took me a few minutes. I just had to run around and grab a few things to start filling them up. I didn't worry about filling them up too much because as we don't have the staters yet, um, again, I can't fill up that last machine. And uh, I mean, we have all episode to work with this. So, I mean, I'm just going to kind of come back here from time to time, throw a few more materials in as I need them. They don't work crazy fast anyway. We're obviously we're only making two smart plating per minute. Um, we're making five or style framework per minute. So it's not going super crazy fast. So... We can now move on to uh, go making an encased industrial beam setup. So let's head on over to uh, with our original steel factory and uh, we're going to get things set up over there. All right, look at this beautiful steel factory we made. What was it last episode? A couple episodes ago. Um, so we are going to add on, as you can see, I've already actually added on here. Um, you're going to add on another four by however long this was foundation so four by one two three four five six seven eight nine ten four by ten um and we are going to start to add in everything we're going to need here um so we're going to start with the foundries i won't worry about hooking up the belts and everything just yet although we are going to need to upgrade what miners are these this is looks like a miner mark one It is. Okay, so we're going to have to upgrade these to Miner Mark 2s. And then uh, we'll have to upgrade the belts as well because we need to be able to push 240 a minute and we're only currently moving 120. So we're going to add on another three foundries over here. We need a little bit of space in between. It's okay. Line them up as best we can though. Oops. Is it... Hello? Hello? If you're trying to line up with the other... Oh, it's because it's turned. That's why. So, one. Two. Three foundries. And then in front of these three foundries, we're going to want to put two constructors. So, I'm going to line that up with this one right here. The output here. We got our MAM research already. Excellent. Um, okay, so I'm going to lock this in place for a second, and then I'm going to nudge it around as I need to. So it is lined up. Basically, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be manifolding these three smelters, our foundries, these three together. That will feed into these two constructors here. So what I am actually need to do is I am actually need to put this way more forward than I thought I did, because I have to have room for um, the splitters to go in behind these. Oh, you can only nudge it so far. Interesting. Okay, so we'll actually end up putting them here. So we'll do one and two. And then over here, I'm going to put three more constructors. Actually, let me put the assembler in first. Just so I know where it's going to line up to. I'll line it up with the output of the foundry here. Or not the foundry, the constructor. We'll lock it with H. There we go, that's lined up with that one. And I'm going to need more space, so we're going to nudge it back that way. It's perfect. Now, we can add in the three more constructors. To try and get a nice right angle here. We're gonna go like this. Lock it in place for a second. Okay, so we're gonna go uh, one there. Sorry, I'm doing this at night. But should be should be bright enough, I think. Got three constructors there. 
then this one's going to be down to, we'll set these to concrete, and this one's going to be 50%. Concrete, concrete, steel beam, and steel beam. Oh yeah, one of these foundries is going to be down clogged 50% as well. I think I mentioned that if I didn't. 50%. These ones will be left to maximum. Okay, perfect. This seems like the sun's coming up just in time for our belt work. Okay, editing Sheffrey here. Hopefully I put this in the right place. Um, I made a mistake when I was laying this out for the first time. Um, this foundry actually only needs to be set to, or it needs to be set to doing 30 per minute instead of whatever I had it doing before. Um, hopefully I stuck this into the video in the right place. Um, so these are actually going to be taking 120 total, which is going to require 240 um, so the down clocking I did in all these miners was actually unnecessary and I've turned them all back up 120 parts per minute 120 parts per minute and 240 coming from coal So that should now feed both of these both these three sets of foundries um, Are taking 120 each and that should balance everything out probably again. Sorry about that math is not my not my strong suit back to the video Okay, so as the Sun's coming up. Here's just a nice quick little overhead view for you guys um, So we have a, we'll have our three foundries they're going to feed those two constructors there. We're going to have a miner on this limestone right here. It's going to feed these three constructors. And then, so those five constructors are going to feed this one assembler doing our encased industrial beams. And then, so we'll have to add, as you guys can see, I added another five here on the side. We're going to have to add another couple on the back for the storage. Okay, so I just added a few platforms on the back here over top of the limestone node. Um, so let's go ahead and throw on our miner, Mark II. I realized I have this in my hotbar. I'm like, what am I doing? I'm going to have to expose a little bit of it here. Where can I connect this to? I am going to face it this direction. Put that back in. Take these ones out. Add them in along here. So I can hopefully make this a little bit cleaner. So I'm going to want to grab a splitter so that I can send this in a nice straight direction. Merger splitter doesn't really matter. I'm going to end up taking it out anyway. So I get a nice clean line. I'm going to want a Mark II belt in between here because we're going to want to send... How much concrete am I sending? 22 and a half. 90, well, like 112. Yeah, one one twelve point five one one two point five. One one two point five. It is 187.5 clock speed, so you'll need two, um, two power shards and mark two belts. Ah, oh, that's actually interesting. That's actually somehow a lift up. Okay, so now we can send this on over to our constructors there. Set that there for now. That actually may have been the. It's funny. That's actually exactly where it needed to be. What a good guess. Um, okay, so we're gonna need uh, splitters in front of these, obviously. Where's ours? Oops. I gotta get used to where uh, things are on the hotbar now. So splitter input coming from where I am. Lined up right in the middle. I'm just going to start doing... We have the materials now. I'm just going to start doing splitters everywhere. It makes it nice and clean. Conveyor belt mark twos. Conveyor belt mark ones to feed the machine. Conveyor belt mark two into here. Can I... Uh... Wait. What? 
Oh, it's because I used a merger, that's why. Okay, easy fix. So don't don't use a merger, if you're wondering. There we go. I was like, huh? Let's make these are connected. Because I don't think they were. Oops. Oops. There we go. Okay. Now to make sure that's actually working, let's uh whoops. I don't have a there we go. I was like, I don't have one of those. Power lines, where are you? Hook you up for now. Make sure you're working properly. And you'll preload my lines here. Okay, so those are all hooked up properly. Should see limestone starting to feed out in a minute. Do I, did I have any that I accidentally picked up? I do. There you go. Take my limestone. What? Oh. I don't think this is connected now. Now it works. Okay. I just hate when that happens. Weird splitter things. Okay, so in front of this, I'm going to need one. Uh, we're going to get our mergers and splitters here. Mergers. So merger in front of our middle one here. Facing, output facing towards me. And we'll do Mark 1 belts connecting into there. And then I will do a splitter. Like that. Actually... I guess this could just be a belt. Mark one belt. That's... What? I don't know what just happened there. I don't know what was happening there. It was weird. But there we go. Okay, so that'll be our concrete feeding in. Let's go ahead and set this up really quick. Cased industrial beams. This is going to need one um, power shard. I guess this might seem a little silly to... But you're going to give it an extra 25%, so we get an extra one and a half per minute, which is going to bring it up to 30 steel beams per minute, which is even and nice, and I can work with that. And uh, what is it? Concrete-wise, 37 and a half, which is... 7.5 here, 15, 15 is 30, 37.5. Look at that math, look at those math skills. Um, okay, so let's go ahead and connect these two in now. Let's go merger in front of this one over here with the output facing me. Just like that. Mark one belt in between them. Ooh. That's not correct. Oh, it's because there's there's so many different things you can line up with here. There we go. Those are just Mark 1 belts because it's only ever going to be 30, 30 steel beams. 15, 15, 30. And so now it should be a splitter in front of this one. The input coming from the foundries back there. Turn the input this way. Now, I believe these have to be Mark... Like, Mark 1 belts can feed the... Um, oh, autosave. Mark 1 belts can feed the constructors. But it's going to be Mark 2 belts. 
um, going in between those. And then so I'm going to need mergers here. So we got merger, input facing towards the splitter here. And then we're going to turn it facing towards that merger. And there we go. So mark one belts feeding the mergers. Mark two belts. Actually, I think this one can just be a mark one belt. Yeah. Oh, I missed. There we go. Mark two belt going into here. And now we can set up the manifold line on the front. Um, so really we're just going to be extending off this one. So make sure the input is coming from back there. There's one. Two. Three. And then same thing where we stack. Stack up two. Make sure your inputs are facing back towards the, uh, the other line. And then we're going to be changing these to mark three belts. So it can move 240 a minute. And I don't want to hook them up just yet. So we can hook these ones up. Conveyor belt mark ones feeding the machines. Oops. Mark three belts between these... Uh, Splitters up here. Yeah, Mark 1 belts feeding all your machines. Just like that. Yeah, not connecting these just yet. Um, I'm going to start turning these into Mark 3 belts for now, just so it's all ready to go. Make sure you get every piece, corners and all. back down here. Oh, actually, this this can still be a Mark II belt, I think. Right? Yeah. Yeah, because we're going to want to turn these into um, into uh, minor Mark IIs. And then we can take our power shards back. Oh, wait, no. Yeah, so we're going to put them down. And so instead of overclocking them, it'll just give us 240 or 120. So these actually need to be Mark II belts. Same with that one over there. We'll do that in a second. Let's grab our minor Mark II. Give this an upgrade. Stick it full of iron ore. Otherwise, it's going to be... It's going to delay the line for a second. Then we'll go over here and do this one. Make sure these all get turned to mark two belts. Every piece. Turn this into a mark two minor. Stuff it back full of ore. There we go. So now that should be 240 iron ore. So we can extend that line out. Mark three belt. Oh. So now we're going to make sure we finish upgrading our coal belt. If there's anything I missed here, right here, there. Oh, and this has to become a mark three lift. And then we got to turn all those belts into Mark 3s. Is that a Mark 2 minor? I can't remember. It is. Okay. So now we're going to turn that back up to 240.
Things are going to get a little extra backed up here for a second. Belt those in. And now I should be able to start hooking up power. There we go. So where do these connect again? Right. are hooked up. There's my power tower. There it is. Actually, just hook off this one. That's for the constructors. And then... Actually, we'll go from this one. up into there and we're gonna have to drag one over no I don't want you to hook up like that wait where are they okay yeah and then power pole I mean you don't always have to do as many power poles as I do it's more just like my power lines nice and clean Okay. Actually, I think that's it. That's overclocked and doing what it needs to do. These are underclocked to what they need to be. That's set up right. That's set up right. Okay. Yeah, now I think it's just uh, waiting on things to actually be made. Things actually all back up properly. And kind of back these up a little bit. Well, I could back them up coal-wise, but not iron-wise. But I think it's actually doing okay. I think it's running smoothly over there. I'm not seeing any backups. 120, 120, that's 240. Oopsie. Falling down. Cause yeah, I think all I I think all I added was another 120, right? 45, 45 was 90. Yeah, those take 90 each coal or 90 together, so that's 90. And this is. Twenty two point five. One twelve point five. Okay, so I think these can actually be well once they fill up anyway. Okay, so I just had to do some really annoying math, and I think it came out to two hundred and thirty two point five things per minute. So we'll have to go down here. 232.5 That is 96.875 per <laughs> clock speed. That is the exact number that we will need uh, so that nothing gets backed up. Should be 100% efficiency. So I need 232.5 divided by 2. 116.25. Let's go. 96.875. 
we go. Now, nothing should ever get backed up. For the overhead shot. There we go. Okay. So there you go. There is our encased industrial beam setup. Three foundries into two constructors for our steel beams. One miner into three constructors for our concrete. Making our slightly overclocked seven and a half per minute. Oh, right. We need storage as well. We need a storage. Turn that around. Line it up. Now, I definitely won't have to worry about hooking this up to an awesome sink because that's seven and a half per minute. That's so slow that uh, if it ever gets bagged up, that's embarrassing. But now we have encased industrial beams that we don't have to make by hand anymore. And we can take that off our to-do list. All right, back up here at the main base. And we also need to check in on and see what our next man was. All right, what do we got? We got bolted frames, steeled frames, and steel rods. I mean, the bolted frame could work. I think I'm between bolted frame and steel rods. So yeah, I think the steel rod is actually a good one for when we need like a lot of rods for stuff. So I think I'm going to go with that. Okay, now we're going to go ahead and select hypertube milestone. I mean, 300 uh, copper sheets, 300 pipes, and 50 encased industrial beams. Well, guess who just made an encased industrial beam set up? But I did forget them over there, so I have to go run back. All right, there we go. I knew I should have grabbed that stuff before we go. Um, don't forget to uh, occasionally check in on your machines over there. Move your stators over for uh, making the, the one phase two elevator thing. Um, should be working on the background. We'll go check in on them again soon. We'll throw in our copper sheets and our pipes. In our encased industrial beams, and we're going to smack our big red button. Got ourselves some hypertubes. Fixit Incorporated has processed and incorporated frequent pioneer requests for pipe based personal transport. Introducing hypertubes. Safe, aesthetic, adaptable, fun. Enjoy a view of your hard work as you soar through incredibly tight turns. Build them today. Note. Fixit Incorporated is not responsible for any harm caused by irresponsible use of this product. Oh, you mean like if someone was to build a human accelerator? Um, yeah, so if you guys are familiar with the game at all, there's been many um, forms of human accelerators over time. Um, but when they switched from update 7 to update 8 with the new physics engine, um, it actually broke basically all the... Um, um, human accelerators however i did find one it's not my own um shout out to total eclipse for for the design on this one um but we'll we'll do throw it together pretty easily obviously i don't have much of a system for uh for using hyper tubes yet um but hopefully we can over the next few episodes start to get uh set up with some more factories um i'm also gonna need to get my hands on either a parachute or a jetpack to prevent myself from dying every time we get launched out of this thing um However, let's go take a stab at putting this together. Um, so we're going to need, let's see what we're going to need for this bad boy. We need three entrances. One, two, three. We need a bunch of supports. One, two, three, four, five supports. I actually need a couple extra for when we're putting them together. Um, and then just you need a bunch of hyper tubes. So we'll need uh, copper sheets and pipes. Um, looks like perfect that we have encased industrial beams. I think we actually have everything we're going to need. So um, let's do this. I guess it doesn't really matter where we're going to do this. Um, actually, let's try and do it so it'll maybe launch us over to uh, towards our steel. That might be useful. It'll just just send us in this direction in general. Um, so let's get on up here. 
we're going to build some foundations. There we go. Up up on here. Um, I think we just need um, basically a two by three. Just six platforms. We'll get these trees out of the way. I'm also realizing I now have this facing in the wrong direction. I actually need to go like this. There we go. So build build the three. Um, like make the rectangle facing whatever direction you want to shoot yourself in. Um, and then from here, we are going to grab our hypertube things. Start with the supports. Actually, you know what? I'll, I'll do this a little easier. We're going to do this from above. There we go. Get a little lookout tower for myself. This will make things a lot easier. Okay, so now we can go to transport. Set up our hypertube supports to begin. Um, so, um... The first piece that you're going to want to add in is going to go right here in the very middle of the of your one foundation. This is actually going to be the main um, main hypertube piece that's going to shoot you around. Um, now you can actually do this two ways. So what you want to do is I want to try and line this up a little better. I think I need to be a little closer. Yeah, I need to be closer. So we're going to go down for this one. So snap it right up next to it. Like that. So then go one, two, three, four. And it should be right on the uh, grate there. Um, and then you're going to go over one and two. And you do the same thing here. Like that. Oops. Okay. So this is basically going to be the junction um, where you can either split off to the left or split off to the right. So when you're actually coming out of hyper tubes, um, if you set them up correctly, you have um, the ability to, if you use A or D, like le if hold left or right when you're coming through the tube, um, you can choose which exit you're going to get. So you can actually use this for building like massive hypertube highways. So say you wanted to like go traveling off that way, you could build one that goes like that. Same thing for this one. You could build one that goes off this way. When you come through this, or you're coming around the bend here is when you're going to be wearing it. When, you, when you're going to want to be holding left or right down when you come around the bend and shoot through this tube. Um, so you could do this where, you know, make an entrance here um, and uh, it just kind of shoots you out or the tube will come through here. Like, say you want one tube and splits off into everything else, but hopefully I explained that correctly. I'm still a little new to hyper tubes, but um, so from here, what we're going to want to actually do is we're going to want to build another hyper tube support um, just about right, right in front of it out there. Um, because we're going to have to add a hyper two in um, or coming out the end of it. So it actually will suck you in. Now, for the um, ones coming at the back, we're going to want to take another hyper tube support, drag it all the way over to not the middle, but two over from the middle. Is it two over from the middle? No, one over from the middle. So that would be the middle one over and then you're going to want to come down to this lined up with this one right um but on those uh two dark lines there then you're going to come back here and this is where we're going to turn it and not the middle so this would be the middle but one two from the middle And then another one lined up here, right over the grate like this. 
Let me go up top and I'll show you guys from an overhead shot of what this looked like. So it'll look kind of like that. So now what we're going to do is we're going to add in some entrances. So one entrance is going to be here. One entrance here. And one entrance here. Now we're going to grab our tubes. We're going to put the one there, making that a short little tube. And then you're going to remove the support. Oops. I did that the wrong way. Get rid of the support and then the tube will stay. So now we're going to grab our hyper tube. We're going to connect these two together. We're going to use horizontal to vertical or auto works too. Connect all your tubes together. I think auto works just fine here. Oh wait, maybe not. This one may have to be horizontal to vertical. How do you do this right? I think so. Yeah, okay. So now that should be my human accelerator. And so if I just bring some power over to these, this should work. Where are you connected? There we go. Okay, so this one actually also needs it. That's why it's yellow, because it doesn't have a tube coming out of it. So we're going to go like this. Just kind of launch me, I guess. A voice crack there. Okay, so now we're going to hop down from our tower. Don't need that anymore. Okay, hopefully this works. If it doesn't, I apologize. A uh, little bit of a fast moving thing warning here as we're about to go flying around this circle. Um, so, wait, why is, why is green, 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 green? Why is this one red? Oh, okay. It just wasn't uh, registering. Um, so, basically, what we're going to do is you're going to hop in this middle one here. Um, and you're going to want to... I think it should just shoot you left um, automatically. And then as we're traveling through and speeding up, we're eventually going to hit right. And it should shoot us through that cannon. Um, will we die? Probably. Um, but we're going we're gonna to find out. A little experiment. All right. Three, two, one. There we go. We got good speed here. We're going to hold right. And there we go. Uh-oh. 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 Ouch. Holy shit, I survived. Uh. All right. <laughs> it works. Now, now I just got to get back. <laughs> I'm just, I'm just going to hop off the edge here. All right, we're back. And what do you know? The human cannon works. So I wonder what happens if you just like threw yourself out faster, like before you got going like super speed. So let's try that. Let's just go like, let's go one loop. Oh, there we go. That's not bad at all. So that's actually kind of nice. You can, you can. Uh. 
Whoops. <laughs> Um, anyway, so the the main point is that yes, you can control how far you actually want to get shot out, um, depending on like so. I guess you just have to learn how many times you want to go around the loop before you get shot out. But uh, I mean, lesson learned. <laughs> Turns out, even going a short distance, it's just gonna throw you through the map. But uh, it does work. So, we can take Human Accelerator off our to-do list. Boop. Just like that. Um, now, obviously, there's there's more realistic things you can do with, uh, with the hyper cannons. Um, or hyper tubes, I mean. So, another way that I've seen people do it before is they'll just line up a few of these in a row. Um, but I believe that actually takes more power. I think this is the least power hungry method and it's adjustable to like how far you want to go as long as you learn when to leave the rotation, which I think is really cool. And it's pretty, it's pretty small. It's only like a, it's only a three by, or sorry, it's only a two by three pat platform. So it's only six, six square blocks. The only thing I want, I don't know if you can maybe make when it's coming around here, I don't know if you can maybe make this a little shorter. I, I think it's highly dependent on actually having the time to give yourself to be able to hit left or right. So, um, at least we know this one works. And if you have a parachute or a jetpack, you should be totally fine. Is there a sweet spot where there where there's no damage? <laughs> That's funny. Okay, let's go check in on uh check in on our machines over here, see how close we're getting to phase two of our elevator. Probably gonna have to move some staters around. I did end up over I can't remember if I mentioned this. I did end up overclocking this. Um, all the way with three power shards just so it's a little faster because um, the original like if you don't overclock it it makes five staters a minute and it's a little bit slow so look at that we already got 122 um, smart plating we only need 500 um, we're already at ooh that's going a little bit faster looks like we already got two fit little over 250 so we're halfway down in the versatile framework and we're halfway done on the automated wiring. Excellent. So the only thing we got to speed along a little bit is this uh, smart plating. So maybe we'll overclock this one as well. Yeah, it doesn't make very much. There we go. Now we get five per minute. Rotors and reinforced iron plates. Well, here you go. I got a bunch of those. Actually, oh, I really feel these machines. Here, take some of my extras. And then we'll put our staters in on the very end here. I think that might actually be more than enough staters. It is. Okay. So we can stop the staters one. I think, right? Because if we only need another little bit more, then that should be way more than enough. I mean, I, I know I'll need them for other things going forward, so maybe I'll just keep that. I'll keep it going, but I'll just dial it down. Set it back to the five per minute. And then what was the other one we were working on here? Smart plating, that's dialed up now. This needs steel beams, okay. Yo, take all my steel beams. Oh, 
And this needs cables, which I'm going to have to go grab some to refill that as well. So we're coming up pretty close. I'm being able to, to fall, polish on. Jeez, my English is all over the place today. Coming up on being able to polish off the uh, phase two. And uh, so before we do that, we can do our little bit of a blueprint testing. Just kind of see what it's all about. I'm not super familiar with blueprints as they're one of the newer items that I haven't played with before. Um, but I think we'll, we'll dive deeper into it in some future episodes. But for now, I just kind of want to have like a little get like a little concrete foundations area set up for my blueprints. I don't know how big it is. So let's, uh, I'm assuming since it's like, I know roughly the size of the, um, blueprints that you can make. So I'm assuming it's at least four wide. I want to make like a special room for it in the future. Okay, let's see if that's big enough. I don't know if it is. I actually need to go grab some steel beams for it first. Let's see if I can actually hit it here though. No, I actually need to be a little bit bigger. Another way out there. Another one off this side. Another one out this side, I think, too. That should be big enough. Just gonna cut these trees down really quick. some steel beams and then uh, I'll be back here for putting it together all right we're back we got our steel beams let's put ourselves a blueprint designer let's see where this can actually fit this thing is huge okay I'm gonna fly for this one just so I can actually see where this is because holy smokes this thing is huge oh my lord Okay, I think, I think that'll work. And then I can give myself uh, like a little extra walkway along the back here so I can actually access it easier. There we go. Now, now I'll go land. And this thing is large. So I'm assuming this is where I can put like materials and things for building the blueprints. Where I like name it and store it. Okay. Then you get a what? One, two, three, four. Is it four by four? That's not bad. So let's make like a. Let's just try it out so we can see what it's all about. Let's try like. Um, Try making like a line of constructors. So we have like a pre made. There we go. We got pre made uh, line of four with like some splitters. I'm assuming the belts I put in will stay, but like they'll have to be connected. I know they have to be connected into afterwards. So let's say the input's coming from the... Actually, I usually do it this way. Do I? Yeah. So we got splitters. And 
And then I could do Mark 1 belts between these. And then... I guess I might as well just do, like, the fastest belt I have, right? For that part. But then the entrance comes over here. Those all get fed. And then the idea would be that I'm like linking them together. And so I could do like mergers on the back side, right? So like merger facing that way. And face the other merger. Mark one belts. Mark three belts. I guess depending on what it's making. Actually this, so yeah, I guess this one technically wouldn't be, well, I guess you could link it together. But I suppose you technically want I like that, so they just like continually, continuously, you can link them together. And I think that makes sense, especially, so keep all the inputs, or keep all the outputs, or keep everything flowing to the left, I think is a good uh, thing to stay out with under. Um, obviously, as always, if you guys have any tips, and I, I, I welcome all, all blueprint tips um, here, because like I said, I'm, I'm really new to this one. Um, okay, so, I mean, that's pretty cool. So now I'll be able to throw down, like, say when it comes to building, like, a larger layout, I can just throw this down and it's ready to go. So what do we call this? We call this four constructor manifold. Four constructors. Manifold feed. Or manifold input output. Input from the left. Output to the left. Constructors. Save. Nice. Wait, what do I do? What? Set directory. Oh, I can like, uh, add subcategory. Okay. Interesting. I'll have to learn how to, how to organize these better. Okay, so let's try, I'm going to throw this on a hot bar just so it's easier for me. Um, yeah, I mean, that's fine. So then we can clear it. Oh, cool. You get your resources back when you clear it out. That's handy. Okay, so now I want to try. I want to give that a shot. So let's go. I need space wise. This isn't like super important. This is really just a test. Give myself some ample, ample room. Should be, should be enough space. But that's sick. I can't have, oh. <laughs> well, here, let me go. Uh... Oh my God, life's about to be so much easier. Let's take it all. 
taking all this you can actually build over here. I'm going to build a lookout tower. Oh my god, that's so cool. Blueprints are awesome. Look at that. Look how much time I just saved. You're just... Oh my god. So good. And then so when you're taking them down, you can either take down piece by piece or if you hit R, destroy the whole blueprint. Oh, that's great. This is going to be so cool. Now, the one thing I'm curious about is like, how do like the floor holes and stuff work? Would I have to, I'm assuming I'd have to put a floor in. Like, like you probably can't put floor holes right on this, right? No. Okay. So yeah, you got to put like a, And do like the foundation first. This is just for a test. Okay, so if you want to do like through like logistics floor stuff, I'll have to do, I'll have to put a foundation down first. And then I can put in like the floor holes and pipe, all that stuff. Okay, I understand now. I'm learning. Okay, let's uh let's go check in on over there. Here, did I? Oh yeah, I was like, did I miss a research? No. Those staters are fine. Where are we at now? Hundred, almost at two hundred. Okay, we're all about halfway there on the uh, on those. Those are almost done. That's two fifty up top. Three hundred. Yes, yeah, so that's coming in. That's closing in on being done. What happened over here? What are we missing? Oh yeah, cables. I forgot to go grab those. Um, so yeah, let me go grab a bunch of cables. Um. I think that's all we really need cables and then we're just waiting for the for some of these to finish up so maybe we'll maybe we'll grab cables and we'll go on like an adventure or something i'll scout out a few more areas for building things maybe find a couple more crash crash ships would be nice Okay, machines are all loaded up again, so those should be fine. I think that I've loaded in enough things now to where if enough time passes by, we'll be able to complete phase two. Um, so I'm just going to take off blueprint testing for now. I know it was a bit, little bit of a smaller one, but it was just a just wanted to get my feet wet with blueprints. Um, and I was thinking of maybe going on an adventure, but and I may have time to do it still. But I think one of the other things I really want to do is we've been feeding our awesome sink for quite some time. So let's go ahead and see how many points we actually have. 27 coupons. We're going to print that out. We're going to go do a little shopping. We get ourselves some new fun stuff. Specifically, I really want to get my hands on some signs so I can start organizing things better. So first thing we're going to want to do is we're going to grab every sign set, which will be 17. So that's going to bring us down. We have 10 more to spend. Um, we'll go ahead and grab some street lights. That's 16. Indoor lighting, that'll be 13. That'll bring us down to 8. This will bring us down to 6. Got a bunch of lighting stuff. Actually, I'm going to leave light. I'm going to skip lights, control panel, and wall attachments for now. Also, apparently, I had already overspent, so my math skills were not, were not so good. I have one more that I can spend. Road barriers. 
There we go. We're going to buy all those. So these are almost done up here. Um, and just while we wait, we will go on a little bit of an, ad an adventure. Um, but part of this adventure, we'll actually take our stuff over that we're going to need for setting up our, our quartz factory in the next episode. So I'm going to load up on materials, take them over, and I'll leave them in a storage box when we get there. Um, I'm not 100% sure everything we're going to need. I'll have to work it out in between episodes here. But uh, I believe it's probably in the route. Let's, let's just overshoot it, maybe. We'll call it 10 constructors. Actually, what are the... Do we have it yet? Okay, so I did kind of just choose some arbitrary numbers for now. Um, and like I said, I'll, I'll work I'll work the numbers out in between the episodes and we'll get it narrowed down for, for the next one. Um, but it looks like all I'm really going to need to do is grab some cables, some portable miners, um, and then some extras of all these. And then we'll just throw it in a big storage bin over there and we should be fine. Um, so I'm going to run around, grab those, and then we'll start off on our adventure. I'm not really looking for anything in particular, any sort of like crash sites, any sort of things that kind of help us out that look good. I mean, if we can find some crash sites with some more high end items for the awesome sink, that would definitely help getting some more items. Um, but other than that, we're just going to kind of, going to have a look around to see what the map has to offer, see where we can kind of expand to in the future. Um, and we'll just have a little bit of fun. So I will see you guys when we get back. Okay, I'm back at base. That was quite the little adventure. Um, I didn't really find anything too crazy, just some more power shards and ended up in some spaces I've never been before. Um, we did end up getting some more circuit boards, so I'm going to end up sinking all of these, I think. Um, and then we'll throw these in storage. And we'll just hang on everything else for now. But yeah, we'll throw the circuit boards into storage or into uh, the awesome sink. I should immediately immediately start getting us a good handful more points. I 
That was it? Okay. I only got one point. Okay, maybe I shouldn't have done that. Um, either way, let's go check out uh, our phase two of the space elevator items over here. It should be finished up. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Almost. Okay, so the only one we're waiting on is, uh, I think, smart plating then. Yep, this one can stop. You stop now. We definitely don't need any more automated wiring than we're going to use for this. So we're going to go feed these into the space elevator and see how much closer we are to finishing this off. Going down. We got 350 of that, 430 of that, and 100 of that. So we need 66 more versatile framework and 150 more smart plating. That shouldn't take that long. So with a few more minutes left over to go until our... Uh, things have finished off there. I'm actually going to go grab some uh, mycelium. And the reason I'm going to do that is because I think that unlocks the parachute, which will allow us to actually make use of our human accelerator. Um, so let's just run over closer to where our um, coal plant is. There's plenty of mushrooms there that we should be able to cut down. So um, I'll meet you guys over there and uh, we'll just cut down some mushrooms. Okay, so here I am down near our coal plant. Um, I just busted our chainsaw here. I'm just kind of look through the trees here, looking for these mushroom trees. Which will allow us the to get. The mycelia within this fungus suggests strong molecular bonding features frequently observed in adhesives and medicine, both beneficial for field research. A new research tree can now be accessed in the map. And a parachute? I don't know. I'm assuming this is where it comes from because I haven't seen it in any of the other trees. A crouch slide jump with a chainsaw. It's safe, right? Safety first. I don't know how much we're going to need because I haven't unlocked the tree yet. So I'm just going to cut down all, all the mushrooms I see here. Oh, there's a couple more. I believe there's a bunch more like up the hill to the back, but this should be enough for now. What do we got? Almost 200. So do I have what I would need to make a ma'am or no? No, I don't. Okay. So we'll have to run back to base and research this. But I don't think there's any more mushrooms here. Oh, there it is. Okay, so now we'll just run back and we'll start researching the mycelium tree. All right, there we go. I get a little few, few bonuses this episode. So going to the man, we're going to go into mycelia. Research this first one here, which allows us to turn mycelia into biomass. Not really handy for us at this point. Here we are, fabric. Um, so I'm going to need some biomass to mix with the mycelia to make fabric. Toxic cellular modification. Gas numbers. So does this throw it... Would this explode into a gas cloud, I'm guessing? Oh, I can do this one as well. Okay, so let me grab biomass and some stators. Okay, biomass and stators. We got a criteria or mycelia, I mean. Medical properties. I'm not sure sure what this one does. 
Oh, more inhalers. Okay. So now we're going to go fabric. A parachute. There we go. So we'll need 10 fabric and 50 cables to make a parachute. I'm assuming you only need to make it once. Synthester poly synthetic poly wow. <laughs> Wait, is that what I need? Or was it just fabric? Hopefully it's just fabric. Fabric and cables. How do we make fabric? Fabric and cables. We can now make a parachute. Excellent. How do I make a parachute? I need 10 more fabric. Okay. I can do that. Parachute. So how does the parachute work? I have to equip it, I'm guessing? Or my back? Uh. Well, let's find out. Let's go. Let's launch ourselves into our human cannon. Okay, so you just hit spacebar again like you're jumping. There we go. Hey, we can finally use our human cannon then. That's great. Oh, and you can like shift to fly a little faster. That's cool. Like I can hold parachute in one hand and coffee mug in the other. All right, perfect. Now we can finally use our cannon. Now I might want to set up a few more just so I can actually launch myself across the map. Do some speed adventures. I wonder if there's a way to like cut the parachute while you're in the air. I know obviously you want to do it like super high up, but. That feels good that we can finally use our cannon though. Everything's still nice and stable. That's what I like to see. Check in on that every now and again. All right, that should be everything now. Our phase two elevator. Add in our smart plating. And our versatile frames. We're gonna seal that. It's a big moment for this series right here. Moving into tier five and six. Send it off. And it's gone. Oh my God, phase three, 2,500 versatile framework. And then I just I think those are like super, some sort of motors or something and some of the, oh my God. Well, complete phase three. I'll see you in like 50 episodes from now. I kind of wish you could hide that. I wonder if you can. Let's take a quick look here. What we've got oil processing. Which gets us oil extractors, refineries, plastic, rubber, fuel. Oh man, this is this is a huge step right here. We only need 50 motors, which I can probably I can probably make pretty easily. So I think next episode we'll start off with uh actually no. Next episode starts off with, with uh quartz. But uh we'll, we'll definitely this'll be part of the a uh, part of the next episode, I believe. We got gas mask. Interesting. So that'll allow us to be in the toxic areas. 
alternative fluid transport. So there's a packager, canister, packaged fuel, like packaged water. Interesting. I've never, uh, this is, this is about as far as I've been. So I don't know. I don't know about a lot of these things. This is all going to be new for me. And the manufacturer, where you get trucks, computers, modular engines, and adaptive control units. That's what those are. Okay. And I can't wait to have trucks. That's going to be cool. And then tier six, you got logistics mark four. It's the conveyor belt mark four. I think the, what do these take? What do conveyor belt mark fours take to make? Probably computers or something, I would imagine. Where we get fuel generators. That's going to be huge. Getting us fuel power. Conveyor lift mark fours. A jetpack. Nice. And trains. Awesome. And then the new pipelines as well. Nice. Wow. Five and six is going to be a big jump for us. I'm excited. But that's going to be it for today, guys. I appreciate you hanging out with me for another episode. I can't wait to get started on the next one. See you later.